property leases on trust lands. Among other things, these changes will allow Indian country to benefit by incentivizing investment in capital intensive projects on tribal lands within qualified opportunity zones. We continued our collaboration with native community-owned development financial institutions to support access to capital. And we began the process of stream, streamlining the review and approval of HARP Act regulations, centralizing this function in DC and having a single point of contact within BIA and the solicitor's office. The Bureau of, Educa Bureau of Education is now fully independent bureau and administratively separate from the Bureau of Indian Affairs. This separation will provide a more efficient process for each bureau to manage and operate their budgets, and it will enhance the delivery of educational services to our children. Indian Affairs has also finalized a standard operating procedure for funding requests to address facility needs. BIE will deliver quarterly safety inspection reports to Indian Affairs to more regularly monitor conditions. We have also expanded access to Indian Health Service mental health services and law enforcement services to five BIE funded schools. We hosted the first National Tribal Broadband Summit to equip participants with the tools to bridge the connectivity gap. We brought together tribal leaders with private sector and federal agencies to explore ways to expand broadband capacity. The summit was attended by over 250 individuals and 150 federal agencies, tribal governments, tribal organizations, nonprofits, and private sector companies. In 2019, Native American Business Development Institute grants totaled over $720,000 and they were awarded to 21 tribal nations for feasibility studies to evaluate and identify viable economic opportunities. Over half went to propose or existing projects located in opportunity zones. Also in 2019, the Office of Indian Energy and Economic Development awarded over $5 million to energy and mineral development grants to 24 tribes for energy-related projects. 2019 was also a year first for BIA's Wildland Fire Program. They sponsored the first, they sponsored the first three female employees to attend the Fire Leadership for Women program at the National Intra-Agency Prescribed Fire Training Center. Because women hold less than 10% of fire positions and only 7% hold leadership positions, this program was designed to create a support network to help women advance within wildland fire management. The BIA's Forest, Fort Apache Agency in Arizona re received the National Interagency Fire Center's pre prestigious Pulaski Award. The agency was recognized for their interagency collaboration and outstanding performance on, on a reserved treaty rights land project. I'm very, very proud of our wildland firefighters and our fire program staff. Their commitment to defending life and property is second to none. Uh, as a mother and an advocate, the public safety of our communities is important to me. The somber reality is the epidemic of missing and murdered Native Americans, and it continues to cast a necessary spotlight on the dire need for accurate data in our community, for, the, for our community members who are missing or have fallen victim to murder. Throughout 2019, we held roundtables focused on reclaiming our Native communities. We traveled to Arizona, to Alaska, South Dakota, and Washington. President Trump declared May 5 Missing and Murdered American Indian and Alaska Native Awareness Day highlighting the administration's commitment to addressing threats to our people and providing safer communities. I'm extremely proud to report that on November, in November of 2019, President Trump signed Executive Order 13898, which established the Task Force on Missing and Murdered American Indian and Alaska Natives, and it's also known as Operation Lady Justice. The task force will establish protocols for new and unsolved cases, establish multi-jurisdictional cold case teams, 
improve the response to investigative challenges, collect and manage data across jurisdictions, and provide clarity on the roles, authorities, and jurisdiction for those involved. Operation Lady Justice is co-chaired by the Attorney General and the Secretary of the Interior, and our first listening session will be held here later this week. We expanded the Community Opioid Awareness Training Program to tribal communities. In 2019, OJS hosted over 40 opioid community awareness events and trained over 700 tribal community and tribal service providers and trained over 600 Indian Country law enforcement officers in opioid identification and enforcement. So that was 2019. Looking ahead to 2020, we are not taking our foot off the gas. Building on the great momentum we generated in 2019, we are continuing our work on these important issues. Coordinating with the Secretary, we will work to increase broadband and energy transmission in Indian Country, promote education opportunities and safe facilities for our children, promote transparency within Indian Affairs, and focus on administrative efficiencies, asset management, and economic development. The Indian Affairs FY 2021 budget request reflects the separate budgets for both BIA and BIE. We made this change to empower the BIE to manage its own operations and to more independently serve the unique needs of our students while allowing BIA more directly to focus on its own service base requirements. I'm committed to promoting education opportunities for Native students within the safe facilities in Indian Country. I'm excited to announce that we are also working on an innovative project with the Bureau of Indian Education to provide internet access through our bus route. <coughs> More than 25 of Indian Country's longest bus routes will also become Wi-Fi hotspots to encourage our Native youth to complete their homework on the commute to and from schools. They will also provide our communities with additional broadband capacity. The budget also focuses resources on programs most effective in supporting tribal self-governance and self-determination. There are three notable proposed realignments within Indian Affairs to which I draw your attention. First, Interior is going through the administrative preparations to sunset the Office of the Special Trustee in accordance with the American Indian Trust Fund Management Reform Act. We will also welcome the Bureau of Trust Funds Administration to carry out the essential functions currently performed by OST with special emphasis on critical investments in the IT needed for more cost-effective delivery of services within field operations, and trust services. Second, Indian Affairs is proposing to align the management oversight of the Office of Justice Services from BIA to the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs. This elevates law enforcement and justice services to more appropriately align with its federal, state, and tribal counterparts, and which will empower OJS to further implement strategies that increase public safety in Indian Country. Tribal justice support, including tribal courts, emergency management, and fire protection programs are envisioned to remain with BIA. Finally, in an effort to increase performance and delivery of energy-related services to Indian Country, Indian Affairs is proposing to align the Division of Energy and Mineral Development from the Office of Indian Energy and Economic Development to the Office of Trust Services at BIA. While we are excited about the potential benefits these realignments can bring, we understand that this, these proposals need tribal engagement. We will be hosting consultation with tribal leaders across the country on the necessary and appropriate implementation. I'm proud to announce a $1.2 million grant for feasibility studies for deploying or expanding broadband access. Uh, we published a notice soliciting proposals from tribes and Alaska Native entities for the National Tribal Broadband Grant. The application window for this opportunity is open until May 8th. We are in the planning phases of the 20, 
22nd annual or second national tribal broadband summit it will be held again in september a call for papers and presentation topics will be released early this spring i encourage you to get engaged with this process and join indian affairs as we look to effectuate change let's work together let's create some space for innovation and connection that leads to the ultimate goal of connectivity. The Department of the Interior is revising the Buy Indian Act regulations. These proposed changes will focus on potential set-asides for Indian economic enterprises. Sorry, I need my glasses now. <laughs> Set-aside for Indian economic enterprises on construction acquisitions. Uh, the revisions will also strengthen oversight to eliminate fraud, waste, and abuse, as well as unnecessary regulatory burdens on Indian economic enterprises. Indian Affairs is looking forward to Census Day, which is April 1, 2020. Please assure your community members that the Census Bureau will not ask for a Social Security number, bank or credit card number, money or donations, we have been assured that they have a robust cybersecurity program. Stand up and be counted. Census counts have a significant impact on our communities because of the data collected. It will influence our planning and more importantly, the amount of funding available to American Indians and Alaska Natives. As I have done before, I stand here as an extension of partnership with NCAI. I welcome the opportunity to work with you collectively and individually. In 2020, again, we are not taking our foot off the gas. Indian Affairs is poised to continue to craft meaningful <coughs> strategies and solutions that empower Indian country and Alaska Native villages. Thank you.